Experts and Digital Nomads, listen up. This is Living Unconventionally, episode 222. I'm your host, Chris Piak. Welcome to the show. I live for moments like this. Fadi Shanan is a former coaching client of mine, and he got a job offer in Germany. Fadi's story is really extraordinary. Born in Egypt, he worked in Dubai and tried for four years to find a job in Germany. He sent nearly 500 job applications and didn't even get an interview. Then Fadi bought my expat's job offer guarantee and found a job in Berlin in just two months. I interviewed Fadi about his best practices, his learnings in the time that we worked together and his best advice for you, an inspiring expat. This interview was originally published on my Immigrant Spirit podcast. I republish it here because I think you gain a lot from Fadi's insights and his story. Enjoy. Hello, Fadi. How are you? Hi, Chris. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Congratulations, I say. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was a long, short ride. <laughs> didn't take more than two months, but it was very stressful, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Fadi, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, professional-wise. What are you doing? Let's start with that, maybe. My name is Fadi. I'm 38 years old. I have a degree in biomedical engineering. I work as a division manager for a medical equipment in Kuwait. I come from Egypt, but I live and work in Kuwait. For the last two years, as I said, I became a manager for a full division, responsible a little bit for service and sales. Yeah. And how long have you been looking for a career in Germany? To be honest, I started my search in 2013. I made my first contact through the website, Make It in Germany. They told me too many things. The first thing that at least I have to reach level B1 in German. And they said, okay, after that, we will help you to get a job. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. So, and I, I continue because at that time, this was my only reference to look for a job in Germany. And starting from that date, I was sending email like crazy, like almost every medical company in Germany. I think they already have my CV. Yeah. What do you think roughly how many applications did you send over the time? Starting from 2013, not less than 400 to 500 applications. Wow. And yeah. how many job interviews did you get out of that? Only one. Oh, wow. <laughs> That uh, took a lot of effort for you, but you have uh, your person. I mean, we got to know each other over the course of the last two months. You are someone who is very determined to reach your goal. Uh, thank you. Thank you. This is it's an honor coming from you. But uh, as I said, of course, at the beginning, I started to send my application in English. The response was coming very quickly. It didn't take more than two days just to get at the refusal letter. And I said, okay, maybe my problem was in the German language. I started taking some German courses. I reached, as he told me, till B1 level. This was almost one year back. And, and then I started to make my application in German. I had to write my CV in German, my cover letter in German. And still, I was getting the same refusal message. This is an interesting point that you make there because the usual replies always are you have to speak more German. But you already exactly. learned German exactly. and you applied in German. It didn't make any difference. Exactly. Nothing. Nothing. I didn't feel any difference. It was the same. Like maybe it just took them a little bit longer for the refusal. Instead of two days, it will take them one week. Till same response. We are sorry we found a better candidate. And I'm sure I will tell you this story about this one job. I told you I already had an interview. They sent me an email. They told me after the interview, we are sorry we found the right candidate. I said, okay, maybe there is someone there and is better fit for the job than me. Yeah. After two months, they put the same job announcement again in the website. I applied for it. I've been refused again. After three months, they put it for the third time. Same job, same area. And I applied for it again. I still get refused. This is a very typical story because what really is holding you back is not the lack of German language. It's German angst, the fear to try something that hasn't been done a million times before. So how did you find out about my expat's job offer guarantee? I reached a very desperate point. Like, I didn't know what I was doing wrong. Is it my application? Is it the type of jobs I'm looking for? So I said, okay, let's search for an English-speaking job in Germany. When I search in Google, I think your website, Immigration Spirits, came in the first or second result. Mm -hmm. So I checked it. 
then I sign for the newsletter. I continue to monitor the website for almost four months. At the beginning, I saw the offer for the career coaching for a duration of six months. To be honest, when I saw the, the amount at the beginning, I was a little bit afraid. I said, okay, I will pay the whole amount. And still, for the last four years, I was getting no. What's going to happen in six months? What will be new? So at the beginning, I was so afraid. Yeah. And then after getting a point that really I was willing to take a new risk, I saw that by looking at your website and buying your book and see all the tips in there, I was pretty sure that this guy knows what he's doing. He knows the German market very well. I said, okay, this will be my last try yeah. to get something to get something started in Germany. I think you also watched the webinar, right? Yeah, I watched every single video on your YouTube channel. There was, yeah, so as I said, I was monitoring the website for almost four months before I took the decision. And really, I'm so glad that I took that decision. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm really wondering when you got finally this, this shop offer. I think it was basically it was yesterday that you got the reply. Exactly. And exactly. you, I mean, this is something that you have been working towards for years. When when you read, uh, I don't know, was it in a phone call or was it an email? How did you find out you got the job? The whole procedure, of course, started with your introduction when you introduced me to the right person. No, no, I mean uh, exactly yesterday when you uh, when you ah, finally. Yesterday. Yeah, and you I found get, out you got, I got the job. Phone call. Yeah, I got a phone call from them. They said, really, after the interview, all of us, we are happy with your experience. We know that you got the right tool for that, and we would like to offer you the position. What went through your head in that moment? Really, to be honest, before that phone call, I received an email from them. It was a very gray mail. Like, I didn't know if I got the job or they don't want to offer to me. So I was really depressed for almost two days. Like, I went through four interviews for almost one and a half months, and then I got nothing. So I was very depressed. To be honest, when they told me we want to offer you the job, I felt a little bit dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, it's a dream that's hunting me for four years, and this is the phone call that I'm waiting for four years to tell me that we offered you the job. So really, I literally, I was standing, I sit down just to be able to continue the phone call and just don't give them the feel that I'm so excited about that. So I had to play cool, keep it down a little <laughs> bit. I said, okay, okay, thank you for that. I appreciate, of course, your job offer. But let me know why you think that I was fit for the job. And then yeah. they start to tell me oh, that, that I have all the right to for that. But I, can, really, can, I, I can but imagine that because, exciting. yeah, please go. Yeah, I, no, no, I'm saying that it was a very exciting moment. Yeah, I can imagine that because we, we just spoke on Friday when you got the email from HR, which was very non-committal. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I felt very much the same. You know, I thought like, oh, my God, uh, he went through to this huge process and it was not only one interview that you had. You had several interviews with them and now they sent you such a message. So I was depressed too. All, all Saturday, I walked around the house. I had a very bad mood. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> imagine what it was happening here. Yeah, yeah, I can, can imagine. Then to get on Sunday such uh, news is, uh, of course, it's wonderful. Literally before the phone call, I was decided that's it. This is just a formal call to tell me that we are sorry, we're not going to offer you a job. And then I was ready to move on and start looking for another job. If you look back, I mean, now you're at your goal that you worked for for four years and we worked together for, for two months. Mm -hmm. If you turn around a little bit and you look back at the road that brought you here from the moment that we started working together till uh, now, which single step, which single decision helped you the most to get this job? To be honest, if you put it in this way by looking the whole road, I will tell you something that definitely I wasted four years of my life in the wrong direction. If I know that starting from the day one that I was looking for a job, that you are out there in the market and you can do whatever you do, believe me, I will make the decision in 2013. The decision of getting you as a career coach for me, this is the whole thing that made the difference for me. Because you have a different thinking of the whole job application procedure. Like everybody is going with the same direction, seeing a job announcement or a job offer, and then start applying for the HR and then getting refused. What it doesn't matter if you have the right qualification, if you have a good knowledge of the language, really it doesn't matter. Yeah. So really what you did was great. Really there is no much words to thank you for that really. Thank you, Fadi. But actually I didn't do that much. The only thing that I did was to shift your focus a little bit and then help you get in touch with the right people. And the rest is actually all the things that you did and you did them superb. And actually 
I have the numbers to back it up because I evaluate after I finish a placing like with you, I evaluate everything we did together. And I would like to walk together with you step by step to each step of what we did so that uh, our listeners can basically learn from your best practices because you have, um, yeah, yeah, sure. I don't know if you know this, but you achieved on every measurement that I do, you are way above the average client that I work with. Mm-hmm. And so I think uh, I'll, I'll say something. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you like as a candidate, like, as I said, I had the right tool, but I didn't know how to use them. Like I had the experience. I have the language. It's still not a perfect, but I know I got some language with, I can survive in a normal day in Germany. But with all these tools that I had, I didn't know how to use them. I didn't know how to offer them. Yeah. So yeah, maybe I did most of the job, but without showing me the right way to go through, I wasn't able, because as I said, four years back, I was doing every single step the same, seeing a job offer, applying for it, get refused. Yeah. But maybe that's a good um, understand- point. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Maybe that's a good point to very quickly explain to the listener what I'm actually doing. I'm a business coach. I introduce international professionals to managers in Germany so that they can talk with each other about the real requirements of the job. And that is actually what gets them the job. And my clients like you, Fadi, you basically do two things in the up to six months that we work together. Number one is you find the jobs that you are interested in. And number two is you find the managers that are offering these jobs. And I show you how you find these managers. And then I exactly. introduce you to them. Exactly. And then from that moment on, I take over. I build a connection to the managers. I introduce you to the managers. The managers agree to talk to you. And they know already that you are looking for a job, that you are interested in working for them. And everything else after that comes from your own interaction. But let's take our listeners through this process step by step because you do did a few things really, really successful, and I would like them to have the opportunity to learn from your experience. So I have a few questions, yeah. if it's okay with you. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Mm-hmm. Please, sure, it out. Good. The first question that I have is, when I look at the numbers, we worked together, basically, we you booked the expert's uh, job offer guarantee in the last week of December. So basically in Christmas time when nothing was working and we really started to work in January together. And in this time you reached out, you sent me 24 managers that you are interested in, in 24 different jobs and 16 of them agreed to talk to you. Two thirds of them, they were willing to talk to you. And that's already, the average is 40%, which is very good, but you are with two thirds, you are way beyond that. Can you explain that? What do you think helped you the most that so much more people are interested in your job application than in the average one? I will tell you something. The first part is to be sure that the job description is fitting you. Like this is really what you are doing. You have a really solid background and experience about this job. Second thing, you teach me how to use the Zing website, which is a really very powerful tool. Mm -hmm. By understanding how the website in Germany, of course, similar to LinkedIn, but it's a very powerful tool to search for people background in Germany. And just by understanding how to use the search tool, it was very easy to identify who's really behind this job. Can you, can, you, can, you walk us, can you walk us, I mean, to find the job and qualify if you're really qualified for this job? I think that's something mm-hmm. that most people do. But can you walk us through your process, how you define, okay, this is the most likely manager for this position? How, yeah, how, sure. Do you have a process that you use or how do you do this? Just I use the normal hierarchy for employment. Like if I'm looking for a service engineer, that my target will be the service manager. And also, mostly with medical equipment, there will be many different service managers. Mm -hmm. You need to identify which location the job will be so you can identify which service manager. In my case, it was in the service department. So I was looking who will be the service manager at that position. So I looked, I found out like there is, okay, there is three of them. So I had to go back to the job description to see at which region the job is for. So I can identify that it will be mainly in Germany and Europe, which is, we call it the Dach region mm-hmm. or the, uh, the Dach region. Dach so is standing for D-A-C-H, which means Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Exactly. So I found out you can always, using the Zing, I search the company and then I look who's the employer, employee in this company. Normally, if it's a small size company, it will be between 100 and 150 person working in there. And of course, with bigger companies can reach up to 1000 employees. So with the search tool, I just 
have to identify the position that I'm looking for in this company is a manager. So it will give me all the list of managers are working in this company. Yeah. Fadi, what I like about this is your attention to detail. I mean, you really, you look for, for the person who is basically, who will be your concrete boss. You don't reach out to the CEO. Because, exactly. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so normally the CEO, he don't know every employee. He sometimes, because this is, I know it from my experience here in Kuwait, the CEO just don't know what his manager wants. Like, okay, we need to expand. I need two employees. Okay, hire them. He don't know which type of employee. Maybe he wants them in sales or in service or in marketing. He sure. doesn't He doesn't know what exactly it's the type of people he needs. He knows that one of his department needs to expand. So he gives the approval. So if I target this guy, he told me, I don't know what even you are talking about. We are a big organization. We have like... 100 positions. I'm not the right person to talk to. Yeah. And the same is true with human resources. Yeah, this is a, <laughs> this is a nightmare. <laughs> those, those guys just received the application and literally they are willing to just delete the message or just throw your whole application in the trash because it was really a case when you said, for me as an international candidate, it is more work for them. And really I understood that when I got the job offer mail because after the phone call, they sent me an email to confirm the job offer. I understood that after being in Germany, there is another procedure for me as an international candidate, which takes almost another three months, mm -hmm. which they don't have to go through all of this if candidate been hired locally. Yeah. So as you said, it's more job for them. Yeah. And also, you know, very often they really don't understand the concrete position because they don't work in this field and they don't know what you're actually doing in the field. And therefore, it's very hard for human resources to evaluate your contribution. And quite frankly, you know, for them, nothing is at stake. You know, you're just a piece of paper. If they reject you, nothing happens. But the manager, exactly. the manager has a job to be done. He has goals he needs to achieve, deadlines he needs to meet. And if you can help him reach his goal, then why wouldn't he hire you? Exactly. This is a real true story. Because I remember while I was talking to one of the HR, so I asked him a technical question where really they had no clue what I'm talking about. Like they literally freeze. They said, sorry, but we don't know what exactly you are talking about. When you are talking to the hiring manager, we will let you know, can ask all those questions. But unfortunately, that I never reached a hiring manager before. So no one exactly. said, listen to my question. <laughs> That's exactly the problem. You know, if you go through the standard application process, then the hiring manager could answer your question and he would understand that you have value to offer. But since you never get to the hiring manager, because the people before in human resources cannot understand what you're doing, you are in a fix in a bind. You don't get out of that. And that's why... You know, That's why, why we ignore human resources and we go directly to the managers in, in the job of a guarantee because that's what, what gets yeah, the results yeah. in the end. But exactly. I wanted to talk exactly. with you about a second point because, of course, the yes. first step is you find a job, you identify the managers, then I get to work. Mm -hmm. You send me every Tuesday, you send me your five jobs that you're interested in. Mm -hmm. I go out and I start to build a relationship to these managers through my own contacts. I reach out to them. And exactly. by the time that they agree to talk to you, my client, they know already that, yeah, you're an international professional, you're interested in a job with them, and that's why you want to talk with them. So it's very mm -hmm. transparent and it's very respectful. No one, they know exactly what they're into if they say, yes, I want to talk to you. And here's the interesting thing. Even when people say, yeah, okay, I'm willing to talk to your candidate, introduce you, not everyone will follow up. But again, mm -hmm. you have a way to get into people's head and to get them to respond to you. Because I looked just at the introductions I made for you on Xing. I introduced mm -hmm. you in these two months, I introduced you to 18 managers that you have chosen and that agreed to talk to you. And mm -hmm. after this initial context, when I say, hey, you know, Mr. Manager, this is Fadi, Fadi, this is Mr. Manager, have a talk. Uh -huh. You write a message to them and say, hey, hello. And from this 18, 12 wrote you at least one response, which again is exactly. better than the average. What do you think helped you the most to get so many of them to entice them to have a real conversation with you? What yeah, helped you the of most? Of course, uh, at the beginning, because really, yeah, it's okay to be introduced to a hiring manager. At the, mo at the beginning, when I read the program that I'm going to be introduced to the hiring manager, I was freezed a little bit. Okay, what's I'm going to say? Then I had to go through again through your book and I saw how I can be introduced. And of course, we had uh, a couple of sessions. That coaching you, sessions, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Coaching session that you taught me how to interact with the hiring manager, what exactly the right question to ask. And the way that you put it in the beginning make a little bit sense to me. Okay, this is might be the really right question to catch the attention of a hiring manager. Mm -hmm. So 
I start to follow the strategy. Okay, there is a couple of questions and you always was pointing, try to keep it as short as you can because if it will be a long message, it will be a little bit boring, maybe I'll lose his attention. So to follow this two rules, keep it short, keep it direct and ask the right question, it was very easy to catch their attention. I agree with you, obviously, because uh, I wrote that book. <laughs> it would be weird if I wouldn't agree with myself. But what I noticed when I look at your results, and I always look at my best coaches and I look what they do differently. So I can constantly mm -hmm. improve on my own coaching. And I think what made the difference in your case is that you look at this process not as a technical process, not as a machine that is one step, mm -hmm. second step, and so on. But you really understand that what you're doing here is building a relationship. And when I look at your messages, they implement my advice and they are very short also, but you manage in this short message to show a lot of gratitude. Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, of course. Showing gratitude to a person that considered at the first steps as a total stranger for you, this is a very efficient way to gain sympathy. Like this guy, which is the hiring manager, is for me a total stranger that I just been introduced by you to help me in just answering some question about the job. So, of course, I have to show gratitude. And as you said, it's not like a machine work. It's not like I'm asking questions and waiting for the answer. Then I have to ask the next question. Your way, when we had the coaching session, I was very, mm -hmm. how to put this together. I needed to know, yeah, I needed to know how exactly you're going to build a relationship. I didn't know, I didn't understand the term relationship with a hiring manager. How to cement this relation with a guy that I really don't know him. So... As I said, the good start point was the situation. And based on this guy answer, you can very easy to identify if this guy is really willing to help or he just trying to give a couple of information and that's it for him. Yeah, But and you really got this point because the point is not only to get information, know-how, facts, because you would probably have other ways to find it as well. The point is really to make the manager care about you a little bit, you know? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. To understand through the first step, I really was focusing on to make the hiring manager understand that I'm really have something to offer. Really, I have something that will be able to solve his problem, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. If really any candidate could reach this point to understand the real problem behind this the position, mm -hmm. the manager, exactly. Believe me, from that point, it will be very easy for the candidate to walk his way through the whole job process. Yeah, and that's, you know, isn't that what we all want? We want someone who cares about our success, who cares, mm -hmm. who has our back. And this is what you show with these questions. You don't talk about yourself, what you can offer. You ask, hey, what's your problem? How can I help you? And that's something that mm -hmm. stands out. And I noticed when I introduced you to managers, I mentioned in the beginning that you are a person with a lot of determination. You know, you mm -hmm. are really result focused and you find your way to get to this point. And what I could do with you was I could not only say that to a manager, I could prove it. Because one of the things that you achieved for yourself was that in Kuwait, you couldn't find a language course. So you, you took exactly. a private teacher yourself. And in three exactly. months, in three months, you went from A0 to B1. Exactly. And in German. Exactly. And I think that proves to people that, yeah, this guy, he really has, he's really serious about moving to Germany. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and this, is, a, this is true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it's not, not the fact that you speak a little bit of German now. It's the fact that you make this huge effort to actively achieve your goal. It's the attitude that makes the difference, is my feeling. Exactly. This is actually the pointed at the last phone call when they offered me the job. They really pointed this thing out that really at the moment they just approve that I have the right experience, but not the language. They said, okay, the language, you can get it later. You can take a language course. You will. They said, we are sure you will be over that. So as you said, from the whole process, they understood that I'm really serious about the decision. And I pointed that out at the last interview. I told them just, I want you to picture this whole situation for someone that really have a stable life in, uh, in Kuwait. And I'm very, I'll say, good English speaker. I didn't go to search for a job in, in England or United States. I was looking for a job in Germany. So I'm willing to sacrifice the whole life, the whole stable life that I had in Kuwait. I'm coming to something that really I have no experience in it, but I'm willing to accept the challenge. So I'm sure that they think, of, okay, this guy is really willing to come and to start and he have the right skill for the position. And he also willing to continue with learning the language. Yeah. So really, I was very happy that, that this is... Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's really the job. that's really why my company is called Immigrant Spirit. You know, because uh, the attitude that you show uh, that's the real mm -hmm. contribution that you bring to my home country. It's not the Thank technical <laughs> skill, the education you have, but this attitude, you know, to really build yourself a life and start something new and uh, dare something. You know, that's the kind of spirit we need much more in Germany. And I'm really looking forward to hopefully very soon meet you in Berlin and we will have yeah. a cup of coffee together. I have a few more of questions course. to, to yeah, get sure, this, sure. Uh, the most value out for the listener in a short time. So what happens? This is the part that I don't see anymore. You found a job offer. Yeah. Um, you found a manager. I built a connection to the manager. I introduced mm -hmm. you to the manager. You have a first conversation. And then what happens after you have this first conversation? Uh, for the listener, usually I introduce them in a group chat, either on, on Xing or on LinkedIn. So all three of us are in this group chat. And then, then there's a first hello. And then what happens? What do you do? Do, do, you, do you add them to your contact list? Do you send them an email? How do you continue this conversation? The, after the, the first, first step, answers. Of course. Yeah, exactly. After the first answer, I just find out if this guy willing to continue the relationship or this guy is just, I'm going to ask your question and that's it. Please don't mm. do anything more. How do you do this? So once I, I feel, exactly, once I feel, this is, will be very clear from their answer because one of the managers that you introduced me to, I ask, of course, for a, to ask him a couple of questions over the phone. And I mentioned in the email, I'm willing to talk for only five minutes. And this guy spent almost 30 minutes with me on the phone answering all the questions <laughs> and the guy was very generous to me. So <laughs> this type of person that I really can add to my list. So I normally I send after that like a thank you message with a contact request. Mm -hmm. Thank him for his time, for the effort that he put to answer my question. Uh, okay, because really I have a question uh, for, for my own yeah. understanding. Yeah. So this is when you already had a telephone conversation, basically an interview with this person on the phone. Exactly. But what happens in this time, you know, I introduce you, you yeah. introduce yourself and the other mm -hmm. guy say, hello, Fadi. And what then? Do you take them, uh, do you write a personal email to them? Because that's the thing I don't see anymore. More. At the beginning, I use the group conversation for setting up the appointment. After that, normally it will be through Zeng because I don't ask for their personal email at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So you send them a, a contact thing. request or you send them a message? Yeah, uh, of Darren? course. No, I sent a message through Zeng and from there I tried to keep it a little bit professional. And in the end, I said, please, if you have further more information you want to ask, I need to provide you with more information. This is my contact. You can send me email at any time. And mm -hmm. I, of course, I write my email, my phone address, my phone number and my Skype address. Yeah. So by that way, I will take it to the next level. We are moving from the social media to a little bit professional. We are using the email now. Yeah, that's so, the thing I wanted to ask. You take it very fast out of this group chat into a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Exactly. Good. This is mm -hmm. normally done after the first contact with him, after the first phone call. Because as you saw, some hiring manager after the introduction, I sent a message. Yeah, a few of them, they didn't even respond. They just read the message and that's it. I don't know why. they. Maybe they just don't use Zing too much. But as you said, most of them were able to answer the question. Some of them didn't want to talk over the phone. They said, okay, we can keep it here. Just ask mm -hmm. your question by writing the message. All many of them were willing to have the phone call. So mm -hmm. do, you know how many, I, do you know how many phone calls you had with different managers? Yeah, yeah, of course. Through the 24 job application that we had, I've been introduced for almost 16, I think. Yeah, 16, exactly, yeah. Yeah, I had around 10 phone calls. Oh, that's good. Exactly. They yeah. were different. It was different between hiring manager. One of the job, actually, it was through like a job agency. Mm -hmm. And was and I, I was talking to the guy who's working in the agency in there. Actually, I wasn't expect more. I took it as a, an exercise mm -hmm. just to understand a little bit of the market. I know because since the guy was working in an employment agency, I know that he will have some inside information about the markets a little bit. Mm -hmm. So as I said, I took it as an exercise. The guy was very generous. The phone call took almost 40 minutes and he he sent me an email with many BDF about the salary expectation, the salary range, uh, all the company that are willing to hire international candidates. So as I said, I wasn't expect much, but the outcome was really very good. Although mm -hmm. I didn't have a job offer, but at least I gained some good information about the market, the yeah. medical equipment market. Yeah. One thing that I found very interesting, because it's it happens more often than one thinks, you defined a job offer and you defined the manager behind it. And I introduced exactly. you to this manager. And it mm -hmm. turns out that she was not the right person. And what happened then? Yeah. I remember at the beginning, you told me there was a mutual friend between you and her. So 
she had a look at that time. I saw that she had a look of my profile for almost two to three times in the same day. So I said, maybe she's a little bit interesting. And then she sent a message to tell me, hi, Fadi, I really appreciate that you are interesting to the job. At the moment, I'm not the right person to talk to, but I will introduce you to the person who can help you in this. And she sent my contact to the next manager, which she also contacted me in less than one week to start discuss with me about the job process. And that happens quite often that even when it turns out that you made, you addressed maybe the wrong person, it's not that big mm -hmm. a deal because this person at least knows who is the right person exactly. and can introduce you. And, what, what, what and can as you can see, it happened like three, four times with us. Mm -hmm. We sent the email and the guy was okay. It's okay, but I'm not the right person. Sometimes I just insist for the phone call. Just maybe I'll get some extra information because, you know, it's always when you are talking much better than the message because messages are always limited. So normally they are really willing to send, okay, I'm really, I'm not the right person. This is the hiring manager. You can contact him directly. Or sometimes they just don't know who's the hiring manager, so they direct you again to the HR. Mm -hmm. And at this moment, it is okay to understand, okay, this is not the hiring manager, either to contact the next person or to start search for the other potential hiring manager. And, yeah, and even, even if they... Even if they recommend you to HR, it's already mm -hmm. different because you are not a cold contact who is simply applying for a job. But uh, in that case, someone inside the company recommended you for this position. And when you apply, you can always say, yeah, Mrs. Sowieso, Mr. Sowieso, they asked me to send my application to you. And that's correct. Exactly. This is true. I told you at the beginning, I had only one job interview through the almost 500 job application. And actually, this only job interview came through one connection to me in the company. Like I used to work with this company here in Kuwait. So I asked them, okay, I'm trying to look for a job in Germany. So if you have some opening, I'm willing to accept it. So the guy told me, okay, I can introduce you to the HR. And the HR really gave me the second day a phone call asking me if I want to do, if I want to, what type of position that I'm interested to. So really, this is make a quite difference. If you've been introduced by someone inside the company, this is much, much better situation yeah. than applying as a random candidate. Because it adds trust. You know, getting a job is not only about being qualified for the job. It's also if they trust you as a person. And that's exactly, exactly. what an introduction provides. And that is also what, why this job of a guarantee works. Because even though I first have to build a connection to the manager, once he is connected to me, it adds additional trust if then I go and introduce you. Because it tells mm -hmm. the manager there's someone who is willing to put his own reputation on the line to introduce you and to help you. And that exactly. gives you this additional, this minimum trust that you need to have a conversation. So I just wanted to, to ask a few more questions. Sure. The funny thing is the job that you actually landed, it was also through someone who recommended you again then. No? I introduced mm -hmm. you to this lady. She wasn't right. She forwarded you to the next person and they offered you a job. Can you tell us how long time did it take from the moment that you first spoke to your final contact person? Mm -hmm. to the moment until they really decided, okay, now you get the job. Also basically this Sunday. As I said, it was a little bit for me long process because I had to go through four interviews. After making the first contact with the first person in the company, she redirected me to the next person. We had a phone call and uh, she told me, okay, actually we are looking for a German speaking candidate, but actually your qualification is a little bit match for is, is more matching for the job. So let me discuss it with the hiring manager and I will come back to you. And it took them almost one week, okay, to mm -hmm. to decide that you will have another interview. Then I had an interview with the direct uh, hiring manager for this position. Then they said, okay, we finished this interview. It was through video, a Skype video. They said, okay, we will give you a decision and around two weeks, we have to discuss it with our VP, a senior VP, sorry. Mm -hmm. So after another two weeks, they decided that, okay, our senior VP want to have an interview with you. And it was one long hour <laughs> of interview. The guy really asked all type of hard questions just to know how I can deal with everyday situation. Mm -hmm. At that moment, I was a little bit nervous because... Of course, the difference between the Kuwaiti culture and the German culture, I thought this is will might have an impact on the whole procedure. They said, okay, this guy dealing with the wrong, a different type of people, he will not do much more in here. Mm -hmm. So after they told me, okay, I asked him, okay, what will be the next step after here? I said, okay, we'll discuss it. We will let you know in another two weeks. And exactly mm -hmm. after 10 days, they invited me to on-site interview where I had to interview six managers in there from different departments. 
And from what I understood that this last interview wasn't more about my qualification. It was more about am I fit to the company culture or not? Mm. Do I qualify to interact with all this department with no problem or not? Yeah. So it wasn't a really a technical interview. It was like more than formality. Yeah. When and, did you have to, for yeah. the first time, when did you have for the first time the feeling, oh, this can work? To be honest, after the second interview with the hiring manager, because I really did very good during this interview, I was able to answer all his question. I was asking all the right question because normally the, after every interview, they will ask you if you have a question for us. And of course, during our coaching sessions, you teach me what will be the best question to ask for mm -hmm. hiring manager. And actually, really, those questions works very well for me. And actually, one question, the guy was very interesting. And he told me, really, this is one good question to ask at the moment. And he answered for me very well. So from, starting from this point, I said, okay, those guys really are interested in me. I need to put more effort during the next step, especially with the senior VP, because I know this guy will ask a different type of question. It's not yeah. technical. It's more behavioral questions. So, mm -hmm. and... Uh, After having all this interview, I start feeling that I'm getting more and more progress. And then After Friday the comes. HR, exactly. <laughs> I received that comes. email. I said, all my dream went away. That's it. We need to start. And then I say, you remember, I sent you the email. I said, mm -hmm. okay, Chris, we have to start from ground zero. We need to search for the next hiring manager. And surprisingly, when I received the phone call, for me, I said, that's it. Just a formal call to say, sorry, we're not going to offer you the job. So the HR specialist called and she she was talking about the weather because at the moment you have a very cold weather in Germany. I know that. <laughs> because that's what you're so, interested to hear. <laughs> exactly. So she told me we're still suffering from the cold weather. And then she asked me a question. She told me, okay, after all this interview, what do you think about the job? Do you think it's something you can do at the moment? I said, wait a moment. If she going to refuse me, why she's going to ask me uh, such a question? Mm -hmm. I'm sure she's not that cruel. <laughs> like she's not going to play more with my nerves. So I told her, actually, from what I saw, you have some really big challenges that someone and you looking desperately for someone to face those daily challenges. And she said, actually, we are true. And uh, really, all the managers that you met are have a very positive feedback about your experience. And your next challenge will be the language. And right away, I told her, to be honest, the language will not make a problem for me. I know how much fast I can learn. Of course, it will make a difference for me if I'm working in a German environment. It will be much, much better. My current challenge is to understand how your company is working, how to be able to solve really your problem. And really, she liked how much I care about trying to solve this problem. I'm not just a guy who's just coming to do some tasks and go, mm -hmm. you know, this guy is willing to come and think and share his knowledge to solve the problem that we are saving. And to be honest, this is something I will never come across in my mind before our coach mm -hmm. sessions. Because normally when I go to an interview, It's just one-way session. Like I'm sitting there, he asking questions, I'm just there to answer. But the way you teach me in our sessions, like you have to make it like two professionals guy talking to each other. Okay, you are a professional hiring manager. I'm a professional candidate. You have a problem. I'm here to solve it. Yeah. And to be honest, when I had the interview with the sex manager, the last interview was with the service manager and with the sales manager. And actually, it was me interviewing them. <laughs> I was asking the questions. And then at one point, I said, what I'm doing? I'm not interviewing them. Let them ask some questions. <laughs> so I stopped. I said, okay, Chris, you are getting in my head now. <laughs> so really, your way is a very effective way. Just you make the candidate understand how to use his tools. Yeah. Just don't go to an interview and be shy and just feel that your skill are not matching the job and you are way far to get this job offer. Just think that, okay, you had your experience, you know what you are doing, just go there and show it off. Tell them that. The secret is really to, to make it concrete, you know, to, to ah, he's, he's gone for a moment. So are you still, are you back? Fadi? Yes. Yeah, good. Uh, yeah. Just to wrap it up. Yeah, the secret is really to make it concrete, to find out what is really troubling them. And when they have a concrete problem with your work experience, you know what to do. So you can just tell, okay, have you tried this and this and this? But so in this call, we are still on, on the final call on Sunday. You mm -hmm. finally got the job. What are your next steps now? What is coming for you? Actually, the, when they send the email, they want me to start 
at the first of May. So now I finished the first challenge, which finding the job offer. Now I have the next challenge to relocate to Germany. Now, since, as I said, I'm a medical engineer and uh, I had my degree as already assist the German Foreigner Association. Mm -hmm. So I'm qualified at the moment to apply for the blue card, which is mm -hmm. uh, something almost close to the permanent residence. It's for uh, residency for four years and can be renewable. So yeah. I had contacted today the embassy here in Kuwait because they don't face this situation here in Kuwait every day. They don't find someone that's going to have a work permit in Germany from mm -hmm. Kuwait. So I send them an email. They give me a phone call. They told me, okay, we understand that you want to apply for a work permit. They send me like a checklist, which is the most important part in there is to have a copy of the job contract and the mm -hmm. second to have accommodation in Germany which I think at the moment, this is very quite different to find something since I'm already out of the country. I am looking since yesterday how accommodation work in Berlin. Once I'll have that, I already set appointment for the 25th of March for the visa interview. And hopefully I will get it soon before the deadline they give. Mm -hmm. And it's very good. There's actually a company called Homelike who rent uh, apartments on a month-to-month -month basis. That would be a way to very quickly get something to get started. Homelike. Homelike. Yeah, we, we made an interview with mm -hmm. them. Dustin figured the CEO just a couple of weeks okay. ago. You can introduce me to him, of course. <laughs> I will, I will do this as well. So. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, Hadi, I'm really happy for you. And I'm really looking forward to meeting you in Berlin one day uh, when I come over there from Düsseldorf. And how do you celebrate with your family? Of course, we brought cake yesterday. <laughs> because as I said, there was like almost 10 person, 10 people waiting for the phone call. Like my wife, my mother, my mother-in-law, my brother was, everybody was waiting. Like, did you get the job? Did you get the job? I said, mm -hmm. okay, relax. I get it. I'm professional. It's easy to get a job in Germany. You don't know <laughs> what a nightmare that I had to go through. <laughs> But really, it was really, to be honest, yesterday, maybe the one of the first day that I really slept without need to think about anything. I secured my dream job for the next maybe 10 years. <laughs> This was my exit interview with Fadi Shanan, a former coaching client of mine. If you dream about working in the European Union, feel free to book my expat's job offer guarantee at immigrantspirit.com slash guarantee. I hope you enjoyed the show and you will sign up here to the Living Unconventionally podcast for many more great stories of expatriates, digital nomads, and adventure seekers just like you.